Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and today I'll show you how to cut tenons on a table saw sled. A couple years ago, I designed what I call the Mega Sled. It's a table saw sled with all sorts of features, including extendable side supports, replaceable throat inserts, and most importantly, a set of joinery jig attachments that slip onto the sled and make it possible to cut finger joints, splined miters, dovetails, both tails and pins, and tenons. We've made lots of videos about this sled and its more compact cousin, the mini sled. You can watch these videos and get plans for the sleds and all the jigs at the link in the notes below this video. Just click on show more if you're watching this on YouTube. This time I want to show you how the tenon jig works. We'll cut a standard tenon and a double tenon, and you can use these same skills to cut bridle joints, half laps, and related joinery. Even if you don't use my sled and tenon jig, you'll still learn some skills that you can apply to other table saw tendon cutting jigs. So let's get started. I'm using the mega sled, but this jig also works with the smaller mini sled. It simply slides onto the fence, but before you lock it in place, we'll have some setup to do. I already cut my mortise with a router. Now I need to measure its depth with a combination square and transfer that measurement to the end of my workpiece. I can then use that line to set my saw blades height above the surface of the sled. Whenever I cut a tenon like this, I like to use a knife to sever the fibers around the shoulder. This will reduce chip out. If you really want to avoid chip out, you may place a scrap of wood of the same thickness as your workpiece behind it in the jig, but in most cases, I find a good deep knife cut will do the trick. When I cut a mortise, I make sure to center it on the workpiece. This makes it easier to cut the tenon, which I lay out on my workpiece with a pencil. I slip my workpiece into the jig and place it against the perpendicular fence. Then I can clamp it in place by tightening the wing nuts. The entire jig slides along the fence so you can align the saw blade near your first cut line. No, I said near, not right on it. These lines are just guides, leaves room for air. I make my first cut, then I rotate the workpiece 180 degrees and make a second cut. Now I can compare the width of the tenon to the mortise. Your eye is a better judge than you think. Here I can see I need to remove some more material, so it's back to the jig. My sled includes a set of micro adjusters that can be used with any of the jig attachments. Just slide it up next to the jig and lock it to the fence. Loosen the wing nuts that secure the jig to the fence. Then turn the wing nut on the side of the micro adjuster to release the spring and nudge the jig's position in very small increments. This will help you take the smallest slices off the cheeks of your tenon through the same cut rotate cut process. If you don't trust your eyesight to find that perfect fit in the mortise, then leave the tenon a little wide. Leave the micro adjuster in place on the fence and move your jig out of the way. Now you can use the cross cut sled to trim the shoulders of the tenon and get some of that waste out of the way. A stop block will help you cut the shoulders precisely on both sides. You only need to raise your blade high enough to cut up to the kerf. You don't have to raise it all the way up to the tenon. As long as you cut on your shoulder line and not slightly past it like I did here, you'll have a nice crisp corner. Now you can check the fit in your mortise more easily and then return to the jig to trim more off the cheeks if you need to. By leaving that micro adjuster locked to the fence, it's easy to get the jig right back where you left off. There is an easier way, of course, which I'll demonstrate as I cut the other two cheeks. Instead of making my first cut right by my line, I start from the outside and I nibble away all the waste one pass at a time, working toward the center. As I do, I simply check the fit in the mortise removing more material as needed until it's perfect. This takes a few more cuts, but some people find it gives them more accurate shoulders. Of course, if you cut your mortise with a router bit, you'll have to round off the ends of the tenons with a rasp. That's how you cut a standard tenon. Now, let's take it a step further by cutting a double tenon. Again, when I routed my mortises, I made them equal in distance from the edge of my workpiece. We'll have a mortise routing video out soon. In the meantime, I lay out the matching tenons on my workpiece, but again, these lines are just guides. I begin cutting from the outside with the same cut, rotate, cut process as before. I don't cut right up to the lines at first, just close to them, then I eyeball the fit. Once the outsides look good, I can remove the waste in the center. This is where keeping those mortises evenly spaced really pays off. I can begin removing material from between the lines, slowly widening the gap with that cut, rotate, cut process. And again, once I get close to the lines, I check the fit, then remove more material as needed. Once the tenons slip into the mortises, I mark their width and go back to the jig to begin trimming the other cheeks. 
This same process used to make double tenons can be used to create lap and bridle joints, so you can do even more with your table saw sled. Remember to click on the link in the notes below this video to see more videos about these sleds and all the jig attachments. You can get plans there as well. And while you're over there, be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always full of great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at StumpyNubs.com. Happy tenoning!